Passage 4. Listen to part of a lecture in a biology class. The circulatory system. We're going to talk about the circulatory system today, mainly about the circulatory system in humans. As you will probably know, the heart and lungs are part of the body's circulatory system. But there are really three parts the lungs, which involve the pulmonary circulation, the heart, which is the coronary circulation, and the rest of the system, which is called the systemic circulation. All parts of the system have to function independently so they can all work together. Everyone needs circulation, and good circulation, for life to continue. Think of the circulatory system as a circle. As the blood moves around that circle, it collects new oxygen and disposes of wastes. After the blood gathers new oxygen, the circulation process takes the new oxygenated blood to tissues of the body. The tissues give off waste which collects into the blood cells and is carried away. As the blood travels through body organs, the liver, for example, the waste is removed. Then the blood goes back to the lungs for more new oxygen. The circulatory process continues this cycle as long as there is life in the cells, tissues, or organism through which it passes. In animals, there are two main types of circulatory systems. First, you need to remember that invertebrates don't have circulatory systems. They don't have multiple layers of cells, and therefore, they don't need a circulatory system. Their cells are close enough to their surfaces, and the external environment that gases, oxygen, nutrients, and waste diffuse into and out of their cells without help. This is what is called simple osmosis and diffusion. But a circulation system is needed when animals have multiple layers of cells. The reason is that their cells are too far from their external environment and they cannot take on oxygen and get rid of waste by osmosis. They need help. So, this is where the two types of circulatory systems come into play. You have one system called the open system and the other the closed system. Let's talk about the open system first. In an open circulatory system, There is not a true heart, and there are no capillaries. Since there is no heart, the blood vessels move the blood along and act as the pump to keep the blood going. There is also a cleansing process that occurs, but in actuality, the system isn't very efficient. Insects and many mollusks have this kind of a system. It works for the insects because they have several openings in their bodies that let the air and the blood come in contact with each other. The closed circulatory system. Is a much more efficient system. But there is more than one type of closed system, and each system is adapted to different kinds of high invertebrates and vertebrates. With a few exceptions, in each closed system you have a heart pumping blood and you have a system of arteries, veins, and capillaries through which the blood flows and the waste is removed. Now, let's look at some vertebrates. Fish have a two chambered heart. It has one atrium and a ventricle. It has a valve between its chambers and its walls are muscular. If you have ever seen a live fish, you know that a fish's gills are very important. It is here where new oxygen is received and carbon dioxide is gotten rid of. The heart has pumped the blood to the gills. The exchanges are made there and then the blood is moved to the fish's organs where more exchanges are made. These exchanges include nutrients, gases, and wastes. Once the circuit is complete, the process starts over. The next step up the vertebrate ladder is the vertebrate with a three chambered heart. The frog is a good example of this level. These vertebrates have a heart with two atria and one ventricle. Blood leaves the ventricle and travels to the aorta, because the aorta is divided or forked. The blood can travel either to the lungs or to other organs. Which atrium the blood passes through depends on whether the blood is being routed to the lungs or the other organs. But in either event, all the blood passes through the ventricle. Finally, we come to the highest level, the level with humans, birds, and all other mammals. This level of vertebrates has four chambered hearts, two atria, and two ventricles, and very efficient movement of blood. Also, Very highly oxygenated blood. In the four chambered hearts, the oxygenated and the deoxygenated blood don't mix. In humans, the atria or cavities form the top part of the heart. 
The ventricles are at the bottom, and it is the left ventricle which contracts very strongly. I am going to stop at this point, and next time we will talk in detail about the composition of the human heart and how it works. Now get ready to answer the questions. You may use your notes to help you answer. Number eighteen. What aspect of the body does the professor mainly discuss? Number nineteen. What does the professor say about ventricles? Number twenty. What is not part of the circulatory system? Listen again to part of the lecture, then answer the question. If you have ever seen a live fish, you know that a fish's gills are very important. It is here where new oxygen is received and carbon dioxide is gotten rid of. The heart has pumped the blood to the gills. The exchanges are made there, and then the blood is moved to the fish's organs, where more exchanges are made. Number twenty-one. What does the professor imply when he says this? It is here where new oxygen is received and carbon dioxide is gotten rid of. Listen again to part of the lecture, then answer the question. Finally, we come to the highest level, the level with humans, birds, and all other mammals. This level of vertebrates has four chambered hearts, two atria, and two ventricles. Number twenty-two. Why does the professor say this? Finally, we come to the highest level, the level with humans, birds, and all other mammals. Number twenty-three. How does the professor introduce the types of circulatory systems?